and gentlemen good evening we want to know who owns the land of course not we the Amazonians but our citizens of La Republic to Cameroon and political leaders in that country and of course the international community that is to whom the question is being referred to Amazonians want to know who owns the land the territory formerly referred to as the British Southern Cameroons. That is a territory that we are demanding answers for. Thank you for tuning in. It's a great day to be here and be alive. As you join, please do me the favor, quickly go ahead, hit your share button as usual because I can promise you this is going to be very, very exciting i'd like to welcome all of you who are joining from ground zero joining from europe joining from the continental usa joining from south america joining from canada the united kingdom the far and the near east from all over all over the globe thank you for tuning in and uh, for those of you who are joining by way of uh, the internet that is facebook ladies and gentlemen once more thank you for tuning in and as you join as usual do me the favor of immediately hitting your share button so that in less than no time in less than no time we should populate we should populate this platform and get the show rolling with the one and only Honorable Joseph Weber, ladies and gentlemen. So quickly do that. Quickly hit your share button. I can actually see. I think those numbers are jumping and jumping. Please do so really, really quickly. We're not going to waste time. Hit your share button as you join so that I can bring in uh, Honorable Weber for this interview to kick start as soon as possible so we can cover as much ground as possible but before i get there i like to uh appreciate once more on behalf of the ambazonian interim government ground zero and particularly ambazonia restoration forces for keeping lockdown locked last week monday through friday the 20th we really appreciate you we thank you for your resilience, for your bravery and courage to defy everything that La Republic do Cameroon put in place on the ground last week to make sure that they hold their so-called uh, 20th May. The Ambazonian Restoration Forces, they did everything. I know there were some sort of celebrations. I call them cacophonies in Nkambe, in Ndab and where again but listen overall overall every ambazonian out there will agree 
that we sent a strong message to La Republic du Cameroon that never again, never again shall Ambazonians celebrate the so-called 20th May. It is done from our history. Never again are we going to go back to it. And so we thank all of you, all of you on Ground Zero who shut down your shops, shut down your businesses, shut down everything of your own to make sure that this call for a boycott of 20th May was total success. Uh, thank you so very much on behalf of the interim government of Ambazonia. I like also to, of course, I appreciate everybody in the diaspora who donated put in money to the interim government to make sure that the Ambazonian Restoration Forces did not defend, did not defend or prosecute this 20th May with their bare hands. You put money into their hands and were able to buy them uh, weapons, weapons, uh, especially, uh, uh, what do you call it, bullets, bullets to put in their AKs. Do you realize we're no, longer, uh, we're no longer shy of talking about weapons? Because ours is war. Ours is war, ladies and gentlemen. So, we want to appreciate everybody in the diaspora who ship in something to so that the restoration forces uh, could be equipped enough to face this 20th May uh, uh, sham. Uh, sham celebration in our territory. Now, this is very important, fellow Ambazonians. You know that after 20th May, everything has been exhausted. They are no longer in, I mean, they are now in, in need for more, more and more uh, weapons, more bullets, everything that will take them to continue to prosecute this war. All of us have been talking about the need for greater ground action. There is no way we're going to get great action, uh, ground action if uh, our fighters do not have the requisite equipment, enforcement, empowerment that they need. So this is what is going to happen coming this Sunday. Coming this Sunday, there's gonna be a very special phone drive a very special phone drive coming this Sunday so we can uh, uh, re, re uh, what is the word we can again empower we can again empower the restoration forces with the bullets they need with the equipment they need to continue with the fire action on ground zero so this coming Sunday ladies and gentlemen the interim government is appealing to every Ambazonian out here in the diaspora. Let us come together. If it is your ten dollar, if it is if it is your fifty dollars, if it is your hundred dollars, your five hundred dollar, your one thousand dollars, we want to come together, put it together, and send it to them so that again they can refill their amore that again will be on Sunday. And this is what we plan to do. We plan to bring all of our major generals, commanders, and fee marshals right here on this set. Yes, we plan to have them right here visiting on this set to speak to you, to address you, and uh, possibly you may also have the opportunity to ask them questions relating to the work they are doing on the ground talking about Ambazonia. So please take that home and uh, save the date coming up uh, I think that is Sunday. I think that is Sunday. Let me just make sure I get that right. That date should be on a Sunday. Oh. Uh, Okay, let me see. All right, that will be, yes, that will be on Sunday, ladies and gentlemen. That will be on Sunday, May the 29th. Sunday, May the 29th will be that major fundraiser to, uh, I 
assist our uh, restoration fighters on the ground to continue with uh, their defense of the territory. Again, recall that after the five days lockdown, they are left with nothing that was supplied them to take care of that. Now we have to recuperate that. That is the reason the purpose for Sunday's special fund drive so we can refuel their armory. Take that uh, very, very seriously. Now, more about fundraising. I like to also appreciate all of you, all of you who came in on Friday and on Sunday to chip in something to support this television channel, ABS. We were able to raise uh, about $7,000, of course, some, some, is still, some of it is still out there, but we were able to raise up to that uh, to take care of ABS. Again, for those of you who came in, chipped in something, your 500, 200, 250, 100, $25, I think the least that ever came in was, the least amount was $25. Some of you made your donations. They were not announced because uh, we had accounts all over the place in Europe, in Canada, and uh, we didn't have access immediately to those accounts. But again, I really like to appreciate all of you, all of you for coming out to support ABS on Friday and on Sunday. And for those of you who were not able to do so, perhaps you were just never aware that a fundraiser was going on, a special fundraiser in that case for ABS was going on. I really would appeal to you, you can still support ABS. You can still donate to ABS even today and by the end of this show, by the end of this show, Ladies and gentlemen, you can still donate to ABS. What you can do right now, you can uh, use your phone, use your phone to take a screenshot of those payment methods. Use your phone to take a screenshot of these payment methods. And while this broadcast is going on, you can go ahead, uh, support ABS with your $20, $25, $50, $100, $1,000. I know some of you can do it. Uh, and then at the end of the program, by the end of the program, I'm going to uh, look, in, uh, look and announce those who have sent in donations in the course of the program. So please take the screenshots of those payment methods and go ahead and make the payment while the show goes on. Now, if you are in Canada, if you are watching from Canada, you also have the Canadian uh, payment method right there uh, on your screen. So go ahead and uh, use that e-transfer from Canada, ladies and gentlemen, to support ABS. And again, we will make sure that we read your name. We will make sure that we read your name before the program is over just to say thank you just to say thank you and if you are watching or tuning in from london or anywhere in europe you also have the european uh, payment uh, platform right there on the screen go ahead use your phone take a screenshot of that payment uh, method platform and uh, please in the course of the show support abs by making uh, your widows might through that uh, payment platform. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much because I believe you will do so. I believe you are going to do so. I Again, at the end of the day, uh, before the end of the broadcast, I will come to you. I will come, I will be coming to you with a uh, the names of those supporting, with the names, uh, reading the names of those uh, supporting, ladies and uh, gentlemen, just to appreciate, just to appreciate uh, your support for ABS. All right. Now, to all the matters, ladies and gentlemen, while waiting for my guests to log in and uh, be on the set 
again waiting for honorable weber to lock in and uh, be on the set uh again we're having a special a very special fundraiser on sunday for ambazonia restoration forces ambazonia restoration forces uh ladies and gentlemen we are asking you to make sure that you uh tune in you tune in support our fighters support those who have put their own lives directly on the lines to defend ambazonia now you know that many of us in the diaspora cannot do what those boys are doing out there in the front lines we always sit here in the diaspora we send money that's all we can do that's all we can do and i'm telling you the highest sacrifice that you can pay is to be in the front line is to do what those guys are doing on the ground on ground zero and that is why no contribution can ever be enough supporting the work that they are doing thank god we have a leader who is now determined resolved to send every dime that comes in to ground zero and that is what it ought to be from that is what it ought to be from day number one so please do not forget sunday some of those commanders generals fms they shall be here to say hi to you so that and to tell you their stories and what they are doing on the ground all right ladies and gentlemen i will take a one minute break and after that i will bring in the honorable joseph weber who has now joined me on the set stay tuned and please keep on hitting your share button i want to see those numbers jumping 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 again one minute out and i will come back with honorable joseph weber stay tuned please gentlemen thanks for staying put in there at this moment i will take you into this broadcast proper i am joined by the one and only 
Honorable Joseph Weaver, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, the man who moved the Cameroon Parliament a few years ago to take the Amazonian uh, restoration struggle to another height. If you, uh, I mean, last week precisely, Honorable Weaver was in the Germany where he held what you call a come together, a gathering of Amazonians to formally put on table the dream, the vision that he has for the actualization of Ambazonia's struggle for independence. He, among other things, he talks about building up revolutionary committees across the diaspora and even on ground zero with which to fight La Republic du Cameroon until Ambazonia is attained. Honorable Weber also took a swipe at other groups that have been leading the struggle up to this moment. Uh, he was particularly critical of the idea of the interim government, not just in Germany. He has always been very, very critical of the idea of the interim government. In fact, he said he was critical of it right back, right back from home. And uh, amongst other things, Honorable Weber also stated he has lived in exile now for three good years and had opportunity to meet with British members of Parliament, House of Commons, and I suppose House of Lords too, and also some cabinet uh, ministers in London. He also stated he had opportunity to have quite a number of meetings officially and privately with the German uh, with a German group, HD, HD, and uh, the Swiss, the Swiss, that is a Swiss organization that is out trying to mediate between Ambazonia and the uh, government of La Republique du Cameroon. I invited Honorable Weber to sit down with him one on one to get clarity, clarity over some of the statements he has made and also to give us an elaborate explanation as per what these revolutionary committees are all about and how different they are from the current structures that the revolution, uh, the diaspora, has put in place with which they are executing, prosecuting the revolution. I am glad. Honorable Weber accepted my invitation and he is here today. He is here today to enlighten us. Honorable Weber, it's a pleasure to have you, sir. Good evening from London. The pleasure is mine, Chris. Um, thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Thank you again. I really appreciate you joining me today. It's been quite a long time. We spoke uh, the last time, I think, uh, uh, not the last time, I think it was uh, last Saturday, briefly, but before then, I think we spoke the last time. When you return to La Republic from your hiding place in uh, Nigeria, it's been quite a, a long time. The question that many people would want to ask is, what was in your mind when you ran away into Nigeria and then went back to La Republic and actually went, delivered another statement uh, on the floor of your parliament? What was in your mind going back there, sir? Uh, Chris, I, I appreciate your question. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do with you is to tell you that uh, today we're going to be holding a discussion on the liberation of our homeland. This is going to be a different kind of discussion from the ones you usually hold because I'm going to be trying to reset our mind in one direction, the direction of liberation. And no matter how difficult that direction is, my duty as someone who believes in freedom is to point my people to that direction and hopefully, if they see what I see, if they feel what I feel, then there is a huge chance that we could get this done in good time. Before I get to that, 
I want to remind our listeners that um, I am here to talk about the revolution and the liberation, not the politics of the liberation movement. Therefore, our focus should be on how to run the struggle properly to take it to the one destination that we all want. That is Goya. For the purpose of our discussion here tonight is going to be on reminding ourselves that if we need to take our struggle to the next level and to make it work, we have to move from the political to the revolutionary and the liberationary mindset. This is a difficult shift, but I want to tell you if we do it, we're going to find a lot of difficulties. We're not going to keep running in circles. So I'm here to give that new direction so that we begin to formulate these strategies, organize the revolution, look at the new approach, and set the foundation on which a people's struggle can thrive. And for it to thrive, we need to build a very firm foundation, a foundation that depends on the peoples of Ambazonia, from the homeland to the diaspora. We need to build a foundation that depends on the people rather than on leaders and their groups and whatever ideology they have. When you build a foundation for a struggle based on the needs of the people and using the people as that foundation, you get to where you want sooner than you imagine. Because I'm saying this, Chris, because any leader, how long does anybody live? How long does do people live? Death comes at any time. And I cannot want to us to walk in a way that we create an impression like if one person died, if we but died, should Ambazonia stop its freedom struggle? It should move on after me. So we should be looking at the possibilities of what will happen to Ambazonia beyond me. Because you cannot be Ambazonia, your group cannot be Ambazonia, your government cannot be Ambazonia, and the Ambazonian struggle is about the Ambazonian people. So we need to set the foundation on them, so that whatever happens to any leader or to any group, the struggle to free the homeland will march on strong and strong. I wanted to make this clear before we start. Thank you very much. Very understood, uh, Honorable. Very understood. Uh, I would like us then, if that be the case, I like us to. I like to take us back to where it all started with Honorable Weber. Please watch. I call it West Cameroon because you will never take it out of our mouths again, because that is a territory in which we believe in freedom. To go out on the street and demonstrate is a basic right for us. And that is why we are saying that there are two Cameroons that came together. If you are telling us, like a state minister stood here last year and told us that what happened in Cameroon is like dropping a few cubes of sugar into a basin of water. Who is the sugar and who is the water? I'm asking the government bench of Cameroon, who is that you rape our children? My brother's daughter has been raped in Boya. I swear to you, the government of this country, does the president of this country know that the governors and the DOs and all the administrators you are sent to West Cameroon are out there behaving exactly like an army of occupation? Our people have no way to go. We have made all the efforts. Our ancestors and our forefathers trusted you to go into a gentleman's agreement that two people who consider themselves brothers could go to live together. Uh, if this is what you show us after 55 years, then those who are saying that we should break Cameroon are right. They are correct. The people of West Cameroon cannot be your slaves. The people of West Cameroon are not. You did not conquer them in war. If this is what you are saying that we should live in, I say simply, no, it will not work. 
How do you have an army that's supposed to protect children? Step out there, beat them, and rape some. It is not heard of in any country. This is the 21st century, and anybody who does that, I cannot be willing for his government to pay the price. We will exact it on you. Because you are. All right. Uh, we can't play the entire uh, clip because it's about uh, 11 or 14 minutes. But I guess that ref uh, uh, reflects your mind what you said there in the parliament in La Republic do Cameroon. After that, you walked away uh, when your security became threatened. You left. Uh, went over to Nigeria, stayed there for a while, walked back into that same place and made other alterations. Again, we're trying to see what, what was in your mind for you to have left, come back, go back to parliament, make again statements that made them so uncomfortable, which then led to your finer, finer taken off from that country. What was in your mind, Honorable? Uh, Chris, to you and your listeners, I will just have one thing to say. The freedom of my homeland was on my mind. The decision to return from Nigeria was the most dangerous thing I've ever done in my entire life. But I choose to do it. And the purpose was simple. I told my team members and my family that if all, we all run away at one go, these guys will take over our land. That someone needed to stand and die, run, go, come back, and say, we will start from where we start. That's exactly what took me back. That's exactly why I keep talking about the vision for freedom that drives my soul and makes me do the things I do and say the things I say. And sometimes I feel I cannot help myself. That is what was on my mind. We are not their slaves. We will never be their slaves. How do we liberate our people? How do we free our homeland? That is what was on my mind when I went back. Now, you talk a lot about freedom, very little about independence. And it caused many out there to ask the question, is Honorable Weaver a federalist? or an independentist. Can you close that argument once and for all? There is no argument to close, Chris. Actions speak louder than words. The trouble with the struggle we have been heading is the fact that people believe that words do the work, that much more than actions. It is not true. There's no argument to close. I want to find out from you now myself. Do you believe I put my life at risk doing those things I did? Do you believe? Take that, take that again, please. Take that again. I am asking if you believe I put my life, my neck at risk doing all these things I did, running to Nigeria and coming back and trying again. Do you believe I put myself at risk? Of course, you put yourself at risk, just as every other person, as those fighters on the ground, uh, putting their lives on the line. Everybody Thank putting his life on, uh, at risk. However, you will recall, no, Honorable, no, that. Thank, thank you very much, Chris. Um, I appreciate that part. The level at which the fighters are putting their lives is not even at my level. They are at a very supreme level of Correct. sacrifice. I have spoken, I have stood up. I've never held a gun. They are at a very superior level. So you can't even compare what I did to what they are doing for us. They are not comparable. All I'm saying is, a man who stands and takes a risk on his life, and somebody is questioning, he doesn't use a certain word. Where does he belong? That is the politics. Anyone who believes in freedom, anyone who believes in freedom, and that is why we called a meeting in Germany and called for believers, people who believe in the freedom of the Amazonian homeland. You can call freedom independence. You can call it anything you want. 
cardinal world rules the world is people seek freedom and you can qualify it with any other word you like i am a freedom seeker and that is why i would stand up to challenge anybody who stands in the way of freedom even if that person is you even if that person is the various governments you have formed if I they want, stand on the way of, I would like, of the Amazonian people, I, I will go for that. I would uh, like you to establish the fact that you are not just fighting for freedom, but you are fighting yeah. for the independence, the restoration of the state of the Southern Cameroons, which we now call Amazonia. Nothing else. Chris? Chris? I hear you, sir. I am sure we speak and understand English. Absolutely. Honorable, you know yes. that freedom can be used in many other terms. Freedom exactly. in, the, in, in one and indivisible Cameroon. Freedom for yeah. an independent yeah. side in Cameroon. So I guess exactly. that is why Ambazonians are a little confused. Some, not all. And I think yep. it is legitimate considering that at the time you made that uh, speech in Parliament, everybody was still talking about a return to federalism a return to federalism yeah. we're not at this yeah. point at this point of people course, are right. trying to draw the line is honorable weber a federalist or he is fighting for nothing but a free and independent southern cameroons i would want to inform you and those people that uh, they should go back and find out who weber is that i started fighting for these things researching on them and asking for the free state that we brought into the union more than 30 years ago that i am comfortable with and as we move forward that's why i'm saying i would not want us to be wasting time talking politics the independence that the southern cameroons enjoy prior to the fraud that was done upon us that is what i refer to as the student state that independence was taken away with the fraud that was done in 1961 and it is what we need to correct we trusted the guys they they turned us into their slaves we now need to beat them and establish an independent state west of the mongol and i've reassured you lots of times maybe sometimes people talk a lot and you don't listen I've reminded everybody that there will be a neighbor to the east of the independent state of Amazonia sooner or later. Great. I think you made it really clear now. Uh, anybody who still goes out and say Weber is a federalist, I hope they get it from the horse's own mouth. Now, mm -hmm. let's move on to something else. You were in Nigeria when Sisiko and the uh, other NERA members were picked up. In fact, you left Nigeria right after that falls because uh, according to uh, your lieutenants, your security became an issue. During that time in Nigeria, were you having communication with Sisiko, Tarsang Wilfred and uh, others, were you? No, short answer. So you had no idea, you were never invited uh, to this NERA 10 meeting. I told you already in the discussions we are going to have today, it's going to be different from most of the discussions you have. Don't drag me into the politics. Let's talk about liberation. Honorable, Let's I get, get you. Don't be, don't be worried. We're space, getting there. Yeah. We're just laying the foundation here. Right. Going on. We, we will get Thank deep into much. that. So don't be worried. Absolutely. Thank you very we will much. get deep into Thank those discussions much. and uh, this is just we the foundation. To. We need to. Yes. We are at a very difficult point in this struggle. And my reason for accepting that we hold this discussion is because I have ended up realizing that we are talking a lot and not listening. We are claiming to be doing things things in public that are never done in public we will, we will get there honorable exactly. don't be worried about that exactly. we will exactly. get what there that? we are getting into the nitty gritties right. of everything that uh, you are that that you are concerned about uh, you. 
Um, so, uh, again, you did not have any uh, communication. You were not having any communication with uh, Susiko and the rest of the government members. Now, Susiko came out and said, you were vice president, XXX. Was he lying? I don't like you using uh, the word lie because I wouldn't want to put it on anybody. All I know is that uh, there was no consultation between us about that. And it shocks me that for someone who had been sending people to advise that a government should never be formed because we'll be shooting ourselves on the foot, a wrong thing to me is wrong for everybody. So I couldn't be saying that the government concept was wrong and at the same time, discussing how to be a president or a vice. I don't do stuff like that. I deal with it. No, no, no discussion was held about that. And if someone presumed that what they liked, what they were wrong. I mean, I think this is the first time you are clarifying this because that I'm insinuation sure. has been made several times. I'm sure you heard of it. Of course, this, of course, it's been made. And I've been trying to draw the line between the mindset of a liberator and a revolutionary with that of a politician. I don't listen to political talk. I don't respond to it. So, but when the opportunity comes and there is some clarity to be made on my name, I have to deal with it straight. Why I'm saying this is because if something like that has to happen between people, there is a discussion. And that discussion to lead to an acceptance. Correct. I appreciate the fact that someone thought I could be worthy of something like that. But to mention it without a discussion that comes to a conclusion was really shocking to me. And that is why, you know, sometimes I, 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 I choose not to be responding to those political issues because they distract me from the focus I want us to be on, from the focus that this vision tells me where we need to be going. And I begin to do those things quietly, consistently, and properly. Now, you have been in exile for three years and uh, yes. counting uh, as of now. And I know also that you were approached to uh, lead the struggle on behalf of Sisiko from exile. Why didn't you yeah. choose to take it to then help Ambazonians, redirect Ambazonians in the direction that we back things the revolution should be going? Uh, thanks, Chris, for that question. The answer is very simple. I have a clear vision for how people want freedom operate. The proposal to lead was not my within the realm of that vision for our freedom. Why am I saying this? Because a political structure had been set to drive the independence and the freedom agenda. And I knew that it could not carry. So I could not be part of that. So I want to be very, very clear about that. I refused it. It doesn't fall within the realm of my vision. And uh, when I was told that I was very categorical like I am now, nothing in the structures we can set, we have already set and take us to freedom because they are not revolutionary and liberationary structures. They are political structures. It is like saying that you need a train to drive to a certain destination and people are offering you a five-ton truck, you know that definitely you can carry the goods that are necessary and you will never be able to get to that destination. So I turned it down because it doesn't fall within my vision of what we should be doing to get there. All right. Uh, that leads me to uh, something else that you said in Stuttgart uh, last week. Please listen. And shot some of those your forums where you have decided that your own freedom will come through the forums and the fora and everything you are forming. If you don't shut them down, you and your children will remain slaves of the Republic forever. If you don't shut them down, you were here referring to 
uh, the different groups which have existed from day number one of this uh, uh, struggle. I'd like to play a second clip, so please take a listen. Can anybody want to believe that I did all of that? Ran away to Nigeria, went and came back and said, we will begin from where we stopped. That I did all of that in order to come out to the diaspora and compete with internet politicians over a contest about whether who is ahead of what. No liberator does that. All right. The question uh, is, when you got to the diaspora, Europe, London in particular, did you reach out to these other groups or did they, any of them, reach out to you to say, Honorable Weaver, thank God you succeeded to escape, escape that damn country. Uh, how can we work together? Or did you say, uh, come, let's sit down and talk and let's see what we can do together. The reason that question is legitimate is because many see your rhetoric as condescending to other leaders who kept the struggle running for the three years you stayed in London and were just doing your things on the ground. Did you approach other leaders to see what you could do together? Uh, Chris, I will begin from your use of the word condescending. That is not me. Um, that is why in my first stepping out, I had a theme that we used for the German event. That the blood of every slain Ambazonia cries out to us for action. And I was asking the question, are we hearing it? Because if we're hearing it, we'll behave differently, we'll talk differently, we'll act differently. That said, I just want to get back straight away. When I stepped out here, we organized a book launch in London. Every single one of you, including you, Chris, the team members who were supporting me, reached out to you and served an invitation. My hope was that you will all be coming in. That is why during the book launch, I told you guys that my bag is full with 25 years of good research that we could use to move forward. And when I suddenly realized that nobody, nobody, including you, Chris, showed up, um, I then said, okay, then I understand this. Then there has to be something that is not right. So, with the mindset of a revolutionary, the mindset of a liberator, with the knowledge of what we need to do to get forward, I then concluded a country can get its freedom only because individuals, people as individuals, believe in their freedom and they are ready to stand up for it. I believe in it and I'm ready to stand up for it. And if I make that call and see nobody, I cannot stop marching. I move on. That is absolutely the reason. Because there was an invitation to everybody because I presumed everybody was walking in the same direction. When I saw no one, I then came to the conclusion, oh, then maybe I thought people were in a certain place and they were not there. And when Honorable, this Honorable, trees, Honorable, don't you think that don't you think that uh the procedure was a little bit uh, wrong because when you move into the diaspora where a struggle is going on and you have to wait to talk to people only after you write your book, I mean, there's sure. something wrong about that. I would think that the first thing for you to have done was reaching, getting to, to London or to Europe would have been, hey, Ntumfoy Bo Hebert, hey, uh, Sako, Hey, uh, you know, call these guys and say, listen, I succeeded to get here. What can we do together? Chris, I never mind being wrong because I stand for the truth all the time. I don't mind being wrong. I'm human. So wrong or not, 
I have told you I walk within a certain vision from what I see. What power do I have to be calling people to come to me? I served an invitation which was a generous thing, which was something that people would do. But on the contrary, if you had to challenge me with that, I have this to challenge you with. In our culture, the Anglo-Saxon culture that we pride ourselves in from the Southern Cameroons, aka Ambazonia, we know that when someone comes in in the rain and in the cold, those who were sitting in a warm room, they run to that person to say, are you warm enough? Where are you coming from? If we have forgotten it, that I needed to reach out here and start calling, I'm calling them to come do what? I had nothing to offer. I had only brought myself to safety. Come so on, I had no uh, reason Honorable, to How can you say you had nothing to I offer? You are a leader. That you essentially was, started excused, this. Please, if I may be excused, sir, I use the only excuse that I could have had to hurt everybody to be able to whisper. Why am I saying this? Because you, like everybody else, has taken it that the discussions on the struggle will take place in the open air. That is not how it happens. When there is a private meeting, when someone is doing a private thing and calls somebody in, and that person comes, that is when a rapport is created. That's when people can know something different. But to say that I should arrive here and start calling people, calling them to come and do what? I will there let, was no reason. I, I will let the audience judge uh judge that, but I will say in my own yeah, yeah. in my own opinion, I think if you got to as, the, as, as a politically savvy person, as a revolutionary, it is not done. Because when you are going to war as it is in all our cultures, you don't need a horn. If you like well, the but then how the did you expect people to come yes. uh, to rally around you if they did not know uh, Weber was somewhere? No, come on. How did you not know I was in London and an invitation was sent to you? I knew you were in did London you when you talked you about come? your book. I didn't know when Weber get to London, found time to write a book. I mean, it takes time to write. It takes at least six months to sit down and right. write a good book. So, you were probably yes. in London for six to one year before anybody yes. knew Honorable Weber was in London. But again, you expect that having started this, escalated this at home, yes. then you have that opportunity to leave, concept, leave to the diaspora. You will get, and, and let, let, me put a, let me put a point so you can get it. Driving in this direction. If we keep driving in this direction, we go nowhere. Do you the reason, the, the reason, the, 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 the reason, honorable, yes, is that the you seem to throw a lot of blame. I came here so that we talk about how to take this movement forward. We so are we definitely getting there. We are getting there. Get definitely getting there. But you have done. But you have done politics and what I should have done and what I did not do. The reason, this does not help uh, Honorable, this is Can the reason why that is legitimate. Happened? Honorable, that is yes. legitimate because you've thrown out a lot I of agree, blame sir. game. Remember that a lot of blame game. And that is why I'm asking some of these questions. So, but let's move I on. Understand, sir. Yeah, I let's understand. move on. Let, let's move on. Now, let's move on, sir. you talked about government, any other group in a, a very derogatory manner you refer to it as the inter uh, the, the internet government the internet groups even ambazonians are all internet ambazonians the, pe the same people you want to rally around you to prosecute this struggle how come you do not see one thing i mean just one thing that these other groups have done just imagine if they had not held the baton for the three years you were in london who would you which struggle will you be addressing today thank you very much chris i have a question for you but what why not answer my own then uh, before why not answer my question then uh, before yours no sir what is your criteria i will answer it when you answer this what is your criteria no sir what is your criteria? Is it writing on Facebook? Is it doing it on WhatsApp? What is your criteria for assessing what who is doing? And that is the, the error criteria. Let me answer you. Then. Let, let me answer yes. you. 
the criteria is in assessing what is being done on ground zero. And you know that it is these same groups that you criticize, that you speak disparagingly about, who are gathering people on a weekly, monthly basis for five and a half, half years to put weapons into the hands of those guys on the ground. The least we expected of Honorable Weber was to say, you guys have made some mistakes, but you tried, you tried, you are still holding the struggle. You never, no word of compliment from Honorable Weber. I'm sorry, the line is breaking. Yes, so, go ahead. Yes, I have this to put to you. Yes, which is straight. I have this to put to you. The purpose of doing a liberation struggle is to overcome the oppressor. That is the purpose. And I want to remind you and every listener and every Amazonian that remember a struggle is a thankless job. The quest for independence is a thankless job. And while we are working at it, we should move away from the political where there is this desire to be praised and appreciated. I have appreciated a lot of what has been going on. I have appreciated a lot of it. Well, no, but I mean, I you, you, you speak in London, you spoke, you spoke in Germany. Nobody there heard a word of appreciation from you. And giving their lives. I have been in every way I have been. Listen, please. I told you raise an issue and you want an answer. Yeah, go on. Good. So I have been. The comments I have been making are simply that with the mindset of a revolutionary. That is why I did the analysis and I showed us the efforts we have made. They are huge. But we are only at 10 to 12 percent. Do we realize that? And we need to do something different in order to take this forward. And that different thing is called work that we are now sometimes afraid of and we want to be lauding what we have done so that, you know, we begin to appraise ourselves and talk about what we have done when there is so much more we need to do. Let me tell you, you have used the word disparaging twice. I do not disparage the efforts of others. But if I see that people who are talking in the name of the very people for whom we are being killed are taking them in directions or leading them in directions that may not bring a final good result stand up for it i would talk about it i would condemn it that's exactly what i am trying to say because if we go on in this direction that you're trying to describe where we do a little thing and then we are sitting and praising ourselves i am telling you chris we are a long way off to arriving where we want to go to ask you what the purpose of the struggle is is it just to keep doing it is it just to create the impression that we are working? It is to raise it to a level where the oppressor can be on the back foot. And it is not in exactly what we are doing now. Something needs to change. And there are people who can help with that change. And that is what I came here for us to talk about. There is a different way of doing things. There is a absolutely, there are absolutely many there. ways, many and ways of doing things. And we are going to house. weigh into your own way, the revolutionary committees. However, yes. uh, honorable, however. Yes, yes, Chris. Many people see what you are doing, what you are saying as our uh, driving people away driving people away and not bringing people together that each time you hold the microphone you are condemning you have not made any complimentary uh, statements to uh the work that sako did for the past four years none that uh akwanga akwanga uh, did for the past four years uh, i mean all these other groups that are on the ground we have not heard you uh, mention any of them.
I'm listening. Hello? Yeah, I didn't get the last part. The line was breaking. No, I'm, I'm saying that nobody uh, has heard you um, appreciate any of these leaders for all the time you've been in the diaspora. That's just what they want. And that is what makes you look like a leader that wants to build. Chris, as I told you, I am not of the political mindset. I transform from the politician to the revolutionary when I choose to go up against La Republic the way you just described at the beginning of this. Therefore, with that mindset, I am aware of one thing. We need to do things differently. There has been a lot of effort put in there. And if we want to keep on that political track, you will only be asking the question, why are we not appreciating why we We should be asking the question, why are we not making progress? Because we are not making the progress we should because we are keeping too close to the political. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, my commendation, my anger, had been at the whole fact that are we aware of what is going on with our people back home, Chris? Are we conscious of it? Do we know the enormity of the weight of what the people are under? It is very difficult. And if me sitting here, if my first consciousness is not to be responding to the pain of those people and to what they are undergoing and feeling for them and trying to look for what can bring relief in relation to how the struggle goes then i'm not being productive then i'm not being productive so to cut your your, your question short i have not lacked appreciation for the efforts others have put i have not lacked appreciation for it but if i were to realize that even in that great effort they are making there is a lot they could also be damaging with their actions and with their words. I go for those words. I will go for them. And that is why I'm saying, please, please, the Ambazonian people, we have a long way to go to get freedom. And I don't want us giving ourselves the, 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 the you know, us giving ourselves the opportunity to be doing self-praise when there is very little working in favor of the struggle succeeding. That is why the mindset of the revolutionary is that of a politician. Let's that is why into... I am not doing this. Yes, I am not doing this, Chris. Listen, I'm not doing this. A, politi a political mind would be saying things that people like so that they begin to appreciate them. But a so political mind, or no, you are a politician. Yes, you, you, you are a politician mind, listen, and you please, have been campaigning please, for listen. so many years yes. while you were in parliament. You are a politician. You campaigned yes, so sir. many years yes. while yes. in parliament. A politician yes. still needs to appreciate yes. what the constituent is doing. Yes. Listen, that is why I told you that I graduated from that before I began this. And if the people we are working with who are fighting for the struggle do not graduate from the political mindset, we will not be able to take the struggle where it needs to go. That is why while I work and the efforts I make, you will not know them when I do them. Why? Because I don't want to put them in the market because that's what a politician will do because he wants, I will not do them. The story of this struggle might be wrong after a lot of us would have been there. And you will be shocked at what many people did and never said. All right, let me take you back to Germany, Stuttgart, uh, with this uh, audio. Please listen to it. If you do something called government, once you add the word G-O-V to anything, you have pronounced corruption. You have run in adventure. Because a liberation struggle recruits fighters, warriors, brave men and women who can stand and die. Okay. Uh, again, that was in the third gag. I'd like you also to listen to this other footage, Steve, from uh, 
Steve from Stuttgart in the Germany. Uh, take a listen. Assure the international community that Ambazonia is better than the one they have come in contact with from Facebook. Ambazonia is better than that. All right, Honorable, if I may ask you, have you seen one thing, one thing that the government, as we call it, or any other groups have they have done right through this struggle since they were created? Have you seen one thing they've done right? I have. I'm sorry, I, I didn't have, get you. Chris. I have, of course. What have you seen? Of course, it is the one thing I mentioned when we were out at the book launch that the first key thing and the commendable thing for which I appreciate the diaspora and its leadership as taking our struggle to a very popular level around the world. That is what had been missing from the struggle. That is what has been missing from the days from when people, you know, the fighters of old, the Mokongs and the rest of them who were contesting their Hijo government. That was the biggest thing that happened to us, to have taken it international. That was the biggest, biggest achievement. And now we are being discussed in the right corridors in certain places as a result. All right? It's a big achievement. But, but uh, honorable, I think that would be disingenuous to, to attribute to the work of diplomacy that we've attained today to those who fought 30 years yes. ago. I think that is that is being disingenuous. The yes. different no, groups, no, the interim no, sir, government no, sir, in listen, particular, listen. we take we listen. took the, the the struggle to the diplomatic corridors in the USA, in Europe, in London where you are in fact the only thing you did was come out and say that all these demonstrations are not going to take us anywhere uh come on How, what did you think ambassadors in the diaspora yes. should be doing chris exactly that's a good question yeah that's a good question what are we supposed to be doing to make this struggle work i saw all of that you effort. said demonstrations so demonstrations are effort. not it part of it that yes there is something we need doing chris which we are not doing yet what is it it is organizing the struggle Organizing. Honorable, what do you mean by organizing the struggle? The struggle yeah, has the LGA by LGA. The struggle has county by county. The struggle has know, region by region and country by country. I know. I know. And who were, going know. To, who were going to get to this with your uh, revolutionary committees? Let's I look at, listen you, to what I you said, you, uh, Honorable. I, I, I agree. I agree. Please, uh, one minute. Listen to this. Listen to this. This please, is what you said. Please. We have set up those structures. This is what you said. Yes, sir. The MPs in the House of Commons and the House of Lords in the UK just to tell our story. Because there is one presumption we have had out here in the diaspora that when we go and demonstrate, demonstrations have their place in a struggle. When we go and demonstrate in Berlin, in Stuttgart, the whole of the German government have now known that we have a problem, so they will solve it. It's not true. They have their own problems. They have their own issues to handle. So I went around making sure I was telling the story to the right people. And believe you me, you would not believe the level of ignorance. I have so, Honorable, it appears you are yes. saying that the doors, every door you knock, the people told you, we don't see these Ambazonians, we don't see these Southern Cameroonians, and you thought we were all on the street. Just are you are you trying to get Ambazonians listening to you now to believe that uh, all their demonstrations in Washington D.C., in front of the Parliament House in London, in front of the House of Commons and stuff, meant nothing. 
What provoked the uh, what what made the House of Commons in London to put out letters asking Britain to intervene in the struggle in Ambazonia? Is it not because of those demonstrations? You you heard my statement that they have their place, Chris. You heard my statement. I said they have their place. There is much more work we need to be doing. The concept I'm trying to bring in here is the fact that the backroom work we need to be doing. Remember, you were trying to get me uh, corrected from the beginning of the struggle that there's a difference between asking for freedom and asking for independence. Do you fully understand what it takes when you want that? Do you fully understand? If you fully understand it, then there is a different way we need to be doing this stuff because independence can never be given. It can never be negotiated. You always take it by breaking the bones of your enemy. And if we understand that, and we have done the things we have done for five years, if we do a self-assessment, where do we find ourselves? So what I'm talking about here is the fact, it is not denigrating the fact that demonstrations should take place. Are we just doing it for the sake of the demonstration? No. We are doing it to achieve a certain goal. If that goal is independence, then we should be ready to start doing the backroom work that takes people that can push us to that direction and i am saying that my sitting here to hold this discussion with you is not to litigate the past it is to be talking about what we need to be doing in order to get this right hold on let's talk about the present you uh talked about forming revolutionary committees as uh the best thing that can replace all these other groups, the best Don't way to the prosecute the revolution, the struggle. Or am I wrong? Yes. Am I wrong? Uh, no, when you use the word replace, you are not getting it right. Because that is where you now make people who have set up the various groups will be feeling threatened. What I'm saying is simple. But you condemn the them by saying they are not doing the, the right yes, thing. Yes. So if you are now coming yes, up with something, you are saying said, they should Chris, not be there. Chris, the structures you say that have been set from county to county, from all the rest of them, I want to tell you they are political structures. Explain it that. It's like us. Yes, let me explain that. It's very simple. They are political structures because... If you do the county to county, you give yourself 13 counties. So you limit your, your operational capacity. If you go for the LGA by LGA, you limit yourself to the council areas, which will be maximum in the southern Cameroons, 78 to 80, you limit your capacity. What we are talking about here is, it is like Ambazonia needs to build a 100-story building in Boya. And honorable, we honorable, we're going to yes, get there. Please, we're going to, I would like please, us please, instead to start please, with no, your committees. No, I, I would no, like no, you to please. start with your committees no. by please, please. I like you to start with your please. committees. Give us a lot of enlightenment please. as to what these committees yes. are and what and why you think they are different from current structures. When, when you when you raise issues, it is easier to correlate them. So that people can understand easily how it is that what we are doing might not take us to where we want to go let me just give you this example when you begin if you were to go for revolutionary committees for the liberation of the ambazonian homeland what happens is once you start setting them because i already said in germany that the setting up of the committees are the various things I saw in countries that have done this whole process we are trying to do today. They made the effort. They set them up. Family units became liberation committees. Church organizations, they set them up. They set them all over so that instead of having 13 units running your county to counties, if we all began setting up those committees that can Set the foundation for this struggle. This I can guarantee you, we could end up with 3,000 of them. And you don't know what energy and funds those committees can pull. So that we build something. That is the foundation I'm talking about. We need to build a foundation on which the struggle can rest. 
And if we have to do that, it is a whole nation we are building. It has to be so big that it can contain everything and all of us. And once you are building it from that direction and doing it as a people, you will find out that the foundation will be so solid that leaders may not matter. Whether leaders come and go, that foundation will keep holding them and the struggle for liberation will continue until the homeland is free. That is Honorable, all I'm trying you, to You say. started this, I remember... We need to start, move our mindset to that direction. Do something for the common good rather than something for the limited groups that we are now, uh, you know, we are now holding on to. You see the reason I was saying about the formation of the various groupings and the various governments. It is because it becomes so divisive People break up into little, little groups and start defending those groups with the ferocity that we need instead to be defending the homeland. So the suggestion is straightforward and simple. People who believe in freedom, and I want to tell you, Chris, it cannot be everybody. Those who believe in freedom can work to set the foundation for that freedom movement. And it can be found in those liberation committees that people who have gone through this experience in other countries did before us. And that is what I would be humbly suggesting that we start thinking about. Honorable County, yes, I mean, LGA by LGA, county yes. by county, yes. regions by region, or country by country. country. These are the grassroots approach that this interim government put in place to get every Ambazonian of every heritage background to find his or herself engaged in the struggle so that Honorable Weaver didn't have to leave Jakiri and go to Santa to militate uh, in the struggle from there. Chris Anu didn't have to leave the BLM, go to Mamfe to militate from there. It was a way of bringing everybody in. And again, grassroots was the idea. Now you are talking about little communes or committees. You started with Revolutionary Council. Remember the first time you spoke on this, you suggested Revolutionary sure. Council, uh, a, a gigantic group in that matter. They were now committees. it's Revolutionary Committee. How is the same concept? Okay, how can the committees be more effective than saying, "Let's go with our counties, let's go through our LGAs, let's go through our countries, USA, uh, Spain, Italy"? How effective can that be? Very effective, Chris. If we can have the courage to do it, one, well, explain to I us. Told you, yes, one, as I've explained to you when you limit it to counties you have 13 groups that will be doing operations so the concept of making it grassroots doesn't work there because you have set it from the top you have not set it from the bottom i mean the county the, the lga is the foundation. last unit in our setup the lga is the last how can you say from the top uh honorable? and that is what i'm saying it is a political administrative thing so Don't how do Chris, how then the how then are committees not political group because at the end of it you still have to have a leader Good. on top of the committees who Good. executes and prosecutes Good. the struggle absolutely that is why i am talking about setting the foundation because when you set that foundation through that way one you gather people together they start talking about the liberation of their homeland. They start talking about committees that are aiming for a certain thing. When you start gathering them and people begin to see the sense in that kind of communal work from the ground, then you build it from the ground upwards. And it's very easy. It is easier that way than to set the something ST up from the top and then groups. send it to the people down there. In there are still so political groupings, honorable, and at the top of it, there is still the leader. There is still the leader at the top of it, isn't it? Yes. So why course, is that different from the counties, from the AGAs, from the government? Sure. Chris, I am saying with all that you have said, 
with all of what is there for us to see and which you are describing the question is is it working towards liberation it has a lot of limitations so rather than make this look like an argument i want it to be you know a clear thing that i, I gave you an example just take for example that um, you people in the united states you had 50 separate committees in each state and then in the state the counties had separate committees talking about the same thing because this divisiveness is the problem we have where we set up different different things at different different angles and they are talking about different objectives with different different leaders so finally we start running in different directions rather than in one because we are we should be looking for the difficult work of creating what can gain traction bring your people from the honorable, together honorable and i think you are misrepresenting honorable i think you are misrepresenting yes. what i have seen in the interim government and in other groups you don't have these other other leaders that you refer to i am not at the helm there am, is one not. leader in the bottom you have the counties you have the lgas and in fact under the government structure they manage their funds they raise their funds and they manage their funds and they manage their fighters on the ground the system you are setting up essentially says we we'll bring these committees together and all they have to do is raise money send it to the super leader who is on top the super leader who is on top decides what that money does instead of allowing no, the LGAs no, and the sir. counties decide no, what their money does Chris, Chris you are falsifying my words in front All of me correct me sir yeah that is that is not true what I'm simply saying is one if we have the courage to face our struggle as it is we would first of all accept that what we are doing this far for fight is not carrying us fast enough towards the destination of boy can you agree with me on no that? no i can't agree with that i can't agree with that right. of, of, yes, of course if not. already if already from your level you believe that we can succeed doing these same things we have been doing for five years then why are we talking why i we think talking? honorable yeah. i think honorable we can make yeah, the system better and the only way making the system better is to show transparency accountability in the things that we do because you will agree with me what matters and what every one of us uh, does in the diaspora is raise funds that's what the diaspora is all about raise money Good. but when people cannot see accountability for their funds transparency in the use of those funds people will not give so if you say if you say committees raise money there committees raise money there you are still trying to concentrate this in the hands of some super leader who has then to tell not the committees all. what their money not, is going to be used for not at all not at all not at all on the contrary on the contrary when you spread it out and the committees are the ones working to raise the funds correct i agree with you yes yes working to raise the funds the the one thing that you want to avoid there is concentrating the funds in one area in one person's hands in one particular place where they can be lost where the corruption can come in where a lot of things can come in and by the way if you set committees for liberation and it is beginning to bring people together chris why i'm even suggesting this because i'm looking at the divisiveness that all we have done in the last five years have created you will agree with me there's a lot of division i'm looking yeah. at the divisiveness and i'm saying now that everybody is sticking to their own thing who is going to be part of what the other is in order to make it work because the pull and push needs to be absolutely in one direction if we hope to get what we want honorable i hear push. you but i see a big problem i hear you but i see a big problem so the committee well, raise the money yes. they put it in yes. one pool now we have 13 counties and there are fighters in all of those counties how then does somebody or some committee sit and decide where the committee the money from the committees go to 
in the present situation we have the counties who are raising money for their LGAs and directing it to their LGAs. Essentially, every county is taking care Please, of herself. But in your you. committee, yes, somebody will have to I'll... sit up there and decide where the money from no. the committees is going to. No, no. So how do no. you decide where the money and goes I, to? I will, I will now refer you to what we are talking about, the back room where revolutionary issues are worked on. The simple process is when you set committees and those committees are raising funds and holding them and in the nation where they are gathering and pulling it together, you now begin as the committees are growing, begin to look for people who can handle your funds at international level, at various levels. And you are pulling Honorable, the problem the is not about handling funds. The problem is not about handling the funds. The problem is how do you deploy those funds to the ground and to who? Because you have 13 exactly. counties that are fighting. Exactly. And, and that is what you, we do not need. What we need is a comprehensive fighting force for the Amazonian struggle rather than trying to identify them as counties. Now, when you do that pool and you have enough to start beating up a national comprehensive force that pushes forward, it is far more easier handling that. And the rest of what needs to now be discussed is the error we have all been making, thinking that all of these things, we just need to come and put them there and say, this is where this will go, this is the person who will do this. That is not how those things work. Because we need to be careful how we put out some of these things in public because we have done this business in public for over five years now and i can tell you the results are what we are seeing and part of it this divisiveness this confusion the the, the need for something to happen something different chris and i'm saying this because i know that it is very difficult honorable to shift the mindset something new is always difficult so honorable if we uh, cannot they, they, shift from what we have been doing for the last five years, my brother, I am afraid we might not be able to get to where we want as quickly as we all desire. Honorable people, uh, some yes. people, and I know many of them listen to you coming up with these committees, which are not in, in any way much different from the structures that we already have in place. The kind of thing you are, are being opportunistic. Different. The kind of thing you are being opportunistic yeah. in trying to come up with something a little bit different uh, to get back into the limelight. Let me ask you this question: Why can't you yeah. invite Ayaba? Invite Ia yeah. Marianta? Invite Akwanga? Invite yeah. Paul Herbert and say, "Hey, we got these structures that are existing on the ground." And why I like us to sit together and see how we can refine it instead of trying to launch some committees that really end up in the hands of one strong man. Chris, I, I am not launching things. In but, the I mean, you are forming them. You, you are forming them from start. I'm not launching anything. In the process of a vision for something, you can see clearly where a certain thing can take you to. Where do you think I have the power to be inviting these people? And there's one thing I want to correct. I do not Chris, need the limelight. I don't need it. That's why I stay quiet. I don't need it, Chris. I don't need the limelight. My duty as a revolutionary and as someone who can see clearly where his country's revolution and freedom movement towards independence can fail is to tell that country the truth. And I've been telling my truth all along. And whether you take it or not, will no longer be my problem. The problem with the way the time the, we all collectively fail. The problem with the way time you time do time. it, the problem no. with the way you do it is that you throw stones. You throw stones instead of gathering these people and say, hey, we need to sit down and talk. You don't do you it. You throw, throw stones, stones at them. You accuse me of throwing stones? Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's a factual statement. I, I have played some of your clips here, uh, Honorable. Let me play yeah. this. Please listen that to this. That is not stone throwing. That please, is please. fact stating. Please listen, facts. please listen to this. Listen to this. It is stating facts, not Can throwing stones. I'm stating facts. All of that. 
ran away to Nigeria, went and came back and said, we will begin from where we stopped. That I did all of that in order to come out to the diaspora and compete with internet politicians over a contest about internet internet politician honorable weber that is the terminology you use and that is why i say you are throwing stones instead of an approach that not. brings them the one, closer the to you reason. for you to sit down have a discussion with i am please listen i am not throwing stones it's a statement of fact why because lots of things have been said towards my person I never respond to them because I consider them to be political issues, so I don't talk about that. But when I have a chance to make a statement, and I'm stating a fact, I had done the real crude politics of the third world at home. And it is only when I realize that it can never take us who dream of a free homeland anywhere, that I change direction. And if today I am commenting about these things, Chris, it is because I'm seeing us facing a danger of failing. That's why I'm stating these facts very, very clear. We are facing a danger of failing in this process. That is in the and eyes of the beholder, and, and you are the beholder here, Honorable. Like I think you, there are things we can like improve on, that. but that we yes. are failing, so I think people will say that is being opportunistic. There are areas we can improve no. upon. No. But let me ask no. you, Honorable, we, let we me ask facing. you. Yes. Let yes, me, let, if, I may, if I may ask you, who is the leader of the revolutionary committees? Because there has to be a leader on top. Who is guiding, leading the people, the committees, the revolution, the struggle? If you want to know what happens when you begin that freedom movement, you already have a whole set of leaders. So if you build all the committees and they were working and doing the funding that you need, how many, how many leaders that you now want? Choose one now, Chris. We have a lot of them. I, that is perfect. What we exactly need where, I am, where I am heading to. Today. This is the point. Yes. This is the point. The point yes. is, again, yes. you have so many leaders out there already. You have ARC, for example, with so many leaders yes. in there. Why can't we be not sit down with the ARC, uh, 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 ARC guys and say, hey, guys, we can actually do this thing in a better way. I want to come in, let's sit down and discuss and do this thing in a better way. But you just want to create another group that comes in and probably the division is just continue. Mistake number one. No, mistake number one, not another group. That's the last thing. That is why when they are talking about leadership in this struggle, the last person you have ever heard that word from is Weber. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because the struggle is a very big thing, Chris. And sometimes when you talk, I get the impression that maybe you don't fully understand how big this thing is. It is bigger than all of us. Absolutely. It is bigger than every single one of us. Yes, it's very big. But and when you begin to talk of it and look in terms of where somebody will be at the end of the road, it is incorrect. It is bigger it is than incorrect. all of us, all of us, honorable. The problem yes. in yes. the uh, solutions, the vision you are outlining is that it's just another thing that Weber wants to do. Just another thing, another thing. And not what? At the moment, at the what? moment when you should think that what? we come together and sit down as a team and say, hey, we can actually revamp this government and have some better structures and do things in a no, more Chris. effective, efficient way. No, Instead Chris. of it, trying to it, carve out something around no. you and call it revolutionary no, committees. No, Chris. I am not doing it around me. I'm doing it around the struggle. That is what can hold the struggle as a foundation and take it forward. It is not around me. <laughs> in fact, I'm trying to as much as possible to stay away from this it is not around me that's why i am suggesting that if we it is like setting a foundation chris it's like setting a foundation for something it's like All setting right. a foundation for a being you are more worried about who will be a leader than more worried about how do we get the masses in 
will be contributing to No, we're talking economy. about getting the masses in. I do not think your revolutionary committees will bring us the masses, uh, honorable, because, for example, you come here yeah, in thinking. Texas. Now, listen that to this. You, you come here. The political mindset. You come that here in Texas, political. for example. You, no, you listen, you come here to Texas. Texas. You come here to Texas, yes. for example, and you said yep. a five-man committee in Houston. You have a 15-man yeah. committee committee in the San Antonio. You have uh, yeah. a 17-man committee in the Austin. You have uh, yeah. another 20-man committee in, Dal in Dallas. Come on. We yeah. have 13 counties, 13 countries of your 17, 25, or 10 committee members. Which county do they represent? You, you, you stand corrected. That, that is the problem you have because we do not need things that represent the smaller unit. We need something that represents the move of freedom of the, in Amazonia. We need something bigger, something that can gather people. And that is why we are talking about believers, Chris. Remember, not everybody who talks every day about this struggle believes in it. Do you realize yeah, that? Right. Not everybody. Yeah, they don't believe. When it is a believer, they give their all. And once you start putting believers together and they are giving their all, we can go very far. Very, very far. Some of the things we even need to be talking about are not things that we should be airing. But you will know something. In every country that has gotten its freedom, it is always through this hard way. And organizing those little units of believers is usually the beginning of their success. And we need to be pulling those believers together. I'd like you to take, a, uh, please, just take a moment. Let's uh, have a short break here, a very short break. We'll come back. When we come back, I will take you to the refugee camp where you presented some images of uh, uh, the work that you have done with uh, the refugees. So please uh, stay put there. form the 900th government, you will go and get freedom. It's a lie. It's a lie. These are the stories of your nation. And you in the diaspora think that by the time you would have formed the 900th government, you will go and get freedom. It's a lie. It's a lie. These are the uh, honorable, that nation. was you in the Stuttgart. You in the diaspora think that by the time you would have formed. That was in the Stuttgart, and uh, sure. you were in that clip referring to the work that you have done. Uh, millions, millions, in the thousands of dollars that uh, you said you have spent. Uh, with Amazonian refugees, and I think you actually mentioned you spend uh, right uh, around uh, 30 million CFA, 30 million CFA uh, with the yep. on the refugees, and sure. you appeared to be sending the message that 
That is the work that no other person is doing. I do not, I do not know whether you see the outreaches that this interim government, I mean, the last one is only as early as uh, uh, less than a week ago. Do you see the, the outreaches that this interim government carries out in the refugee camps, Honorable? Chris? Hello? Yes, I can hear you, Honorable. I'm asking whether you have... All right. Do you see the outreaches no, 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 no. that uh, this interim government carries out out there in the refugee camps? I do, I do. I follow up. Uh, you know, charity is my my bent, so I do a lot. Uh, you know, out there, I follow up a lot on what is happening down there on the ground, and uh, you know, uh, especially the state of those children and the women. I do follow up. Yes. So it, it was a little concerning to me that you kind of sent the message that taking care of the refugees is something that all of your organization is exclusively doing. That was a message you sent in Stuttgart. That's not true. That's well, not maybe true. you need to go uh, uh, replay, re listen no, to what you said. No, I was telling you people, this is what we are doing. This is the effort towards these children. All right. Does that limit, does that stop anyone else doing anything? No. A lot of work has been going on there. A lot of people have been intervening. And uh, without that, they are in a terrible, terrible condition, Chris. So I don't want us sitting here and talking as if we are comparing things or competing between one thing and another. No, that is not it. Because as I told you, we should be discussing here what can help us move forward, what can help this story well, be better. These are some of the things that, that get of... us to move forward. Because for instance, if I may ask you, yeah. if you spend a yeah. hundred million dollars or uh, 50 million dollars on refugees and they are still in Nigeria and you don't have arms in the hands of those fighters yeah. on ground zero would that give us independence you can take care of uh, every refugee make sure they have all that they need and we do not cause focus on the know, ground I don't know where would that we, question is, would we I don't have know independence where that question is coming from no I don't know where that question is coming from if you listen to me well it, co it's coming from I'm, the I'm point where you suggest that yeah. the rest of the groups in the diaspora they reject refugees they don't take care of the refugees not at all that is your interpretation it is your choice of words not mine so what i'm simply saying is there is work we need to be doing and if you are referring to issues beyond refugees beyond what we can do to prisoners and you want us to be seeing else about what needs to be done for fighting to be held up and you want us to be discussing it here then i'm saying you are missing the point no no i, I don't think i'm That's missing the point talk. i don't think i'm missing the point to ask which is more important talk, saving ground yeah, zero or saving the refugees of every struggle, the backbone of every struggle is going for the oppressor correct that is the backbone correct good so and if you think that going for your oppressor means come and discuss here where we are about what you need to do or what you are put as a disposition in relation come to on that, honorable you brought this up i'm only uh, asking is, the question based on what you discuss in stuttgart germany of course because i do not discuss any other thing in public chris so it's the not so it's not wrong to to, 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 to do a follow-up here zero. then isn't it uh, follow up what it is the <laughs> follow up your dis discussion been... in store guy yes we can talk about refugees we can talk about what is happening to you know uh the rest of the people who are suffering when it comes to what needs to be done and what is going in that other direction that is the backroom work that is the difficulty i'm saying that we are having knowing what we take public and what we do in private things like that that you discuss there they expose you more 
they take you out and even give your enemy the first Honorable, idea about what you, you are planning. true, you Therefore, are correct, no doubt about that. But again, this is a follow-up to what you brought out in Stuttgart. Nothing new about this. But course. let's go to the Swiss talks. Let's go to the Swiss talks. Yes. This is what you said. Yep. The yep. Swiss process. I have had I have had four official meetings with HD in the past two years. I had a fifth in a private capacity. And I want to tell you I went through all those meetings, putting them to task, going through the motions, because I know how peace processes work. I have never participated in any, but I have learned, I have met people, I have gone to places where peace processes were conducted, and I know how they are done. And when I met them, I asked for the basics that makes the foundation for a peace process to stand. I found none. The Swiss process. I have had, I have had four official meetings with HD in the past two years. I had a fifth in a private capacity. And I want to tell you I went through all those meetings, putting them to task, going through the motions, because I know how peace processes work. I have never participated in any, but I have learned, I have met people, I have gone to places where peace processes were conducted, and I know how they are done. And when I met them, I asked for the basics that make the foundation for a peace process to stand. I found none. This you found none. None yes. that could help. Yeah. Honorable, if we may ask, what exactly were you looking for uh, from HD or in the Swiss process that you didn't find talking to HD for good occasions? Yeah, we had those series of meetings, Chris. And uh, I would like to let our people know that sometimes people can create a myth around something that is not really there. Because we were desperate and we wanted maybe something to happen so that some, some peace process could begin. It did not also mean that anything could be served us. So when I went into the series of meetings, the, the regular foundations on which peace is sought is that there has to be goodwill between the two parties. And the person who has the power and the might of state, who is the head of state of the Republic of Cameroon and his government, who are killing our people, they had not committed to that process. And once you find out that the person with whom you are battling is not committed to the process, there is no process at all. So I found out that HD was working in reverse, trying to get us together, trying to get us ready in the, with the hope that someday maybe the people of La Republic du Cameroon would accept to sit down with us. And that was very, very annoying. It was very unfortunate because I then ended up discovering that the gradual processes they needed to take, they had not taken. And they were just looking for a way to pull us in this us to sit around the table telling us every day how you know we can negotiate this way or that way whereas the person killing us and exterminating our people had not committed to it and there is no peace process until that killer commits if they do not commit then we are wasting our time we are wasting our energy and we begin to dream for nothing but at the same time, Honorable, you stated that yes, one of the things you found out there wrong with HD uh, was they are trying to rush, rush the process. Yes. But before yes. you and me, 
they have been yes. on this process for two years and counting going to three years and as from your own mouth they have they have yep. not as much as get la republic committed so no why do you think they are rushing when they have not even been able to bring la republic to table exactly the, that's why i'm saying they started on reverse chris they should have started with their friend la republic because they hold the power they are the ones killing our we're only defending and trying to hold on all right we're only fighting back they're the ones killing our people so if there is to be a peace process it cannot be decided by us or by hd it will be decided by the killer and when that person commits then you can be sure that if they are now gathering us they are gathering us the person who is problem has this that okay i will try now rather than use the force of arms i will talk this problem through i saw hg rushing because they rushed to be inviting us when they ought to have been working with the person who was killing our people that was their rush and then i found them they did not take their time to do the groundwork let me give you an example of how a good peace process would work like the one in our own homeland one the peacemakers themselves ought to take a period of time which cannot be less than two to three months to go throughout the territory where you know the burnings the mayhem the killings the mass killings have been done and talk to family members meet members of civil society meet all sorts of people and gather information from them so that by the time they are coming to sit down on the table to talk about the process they have the background from those people who were hurt the people who are hurting those are the people who hurt in the peace process there was no time for that there was no time for that so if and, i may ask you yeah. yes please if i may ask you in the place of the swiss and hd what would you yes. suggest are you suggesting that we should walk off the table from the Swiss and the HD? Is that your position? My position is simple. They are not offering what can help our people. So why waste time on it? So essentially you are saying the Germans who endorse them, the Canadians who pay the bills, the uh, British, the Americans, they got it all wrong by endorsing HD. Let's not just look at the money. We should look at how the process started. HD itself, remember, they are a, a, a uh, they are an NGO, an international organization that is running peace processes in certain countries. Are you aware of that? I am very much so, aware of that. This kind of work is their business. Correct. Therefore, yes, we ourselves have to be conscious of what is it we need in a peace process and have we pushed the oppressor enough to a level where they can commit to a peace process all right if we look at those dynamics and we realize that we are not yet there there will be time for peace processes to hold chris and when that time comes it will be very easy for those things to be done because there is no peace process without the commitment of a government that is killing our people and up to this moment we are talking they are not ready to hear anything about it. They are not ready to commit. So it is winding our time and making us hope for something that is not there. In fact, in the last private meeting I held with HD, I told them that in our culture, the last thing you can do to a hungry man and his family is to point to a hill and tell him that there is a van up there with grain in it when there is nothing. And that's the kind of thing they were showing us. Because the grain in that van would have been HD coming to us and saying, there is now a commitment from the government to talk with you and get the peace process on the going. They cannot be pulling us together to prepare for a peace process that does not exist with the hope that someone will do it, with the hope that the government will reach a state where they will act on it. It is wrong. It is morally wrong for them to do that to us. And you I am sure mentioned, you mentioned, and all the other people. I am sure that they took them on face value and did the sponsoring. 
which is nothing to blame them for. But you we who are so as a result of that should be the ones who should be digging to know what is the need for our people. All right. I, I believe you are saying to every Ambazonian group working with HD, it is time to call it off. But I'm not putting words in your mouth. But you mentioned earlier your meeting with uh, your meetings with British cabinet members, members of the House of Lords in Commons, and uh, if I may ask, what did you? I mean, what did you perceive to be uh, their response to these complaints to what is going on in the, the Southern Cameroon? Because I will say. England is one of the last country that has done anything. The Americans, they are doing a lot. They are doing a lot with that we know. But instead of rising up and telling La Republic to come around, you have to resolve this conflict. The abuse is signing trade deals with La Republic to Cameroon every day. They will not as much as take La Republic out of the Commonwealth. So what do they tell you? Absolutely, you are correct about all the analysis you have done. Uh, the attitude of the UK is at the best, just lukewarm. They are rather indifferent, and we can understand that because uh, they are basically in bed with La Republic. So it is a very difficult process because uh, to them, they cannot take the firm stand that other nations are taking. But that shouldn't discourage us from taking the story and analyzing it to them and seeing what dangers lie ahead if they are indifferent. And that is the, you know, that's the effort I have been making to try to get them to understand that there is something going on in our homeland. There is a genocide ongoing. And whether they believe us or not, if they wanted to reach a million people before they start believing, then someday we are very, very sure that La Republic will give it to them. You know, it's a very difficult process. The English are at the best lukewarm about our, our situation. And it makes one really mad and almost, you know, frustrated because they are the reason we are in that situation. And uh, blaming anybody doesn't help any of us, but they did what they did in 1960. We have a chance to stand and do that correction today. And that is why my hope is that we can be able to pull the necessary, uh, you know, courage, change our minds and move away from some of the things we've been doing so that we can be able to drive ourselves towards freedom. One of the things I've been insisting on has been this statement I've been making over and over. The liberation struggle is usually the choice of a people who want to free their homeland, and we have made that choice. And it is usually a DIY job. By DIY, I mean do it yourself. When you know that it's a do it yourself job, you, you strengthen yourself, you harden your resolve, and you do the things that can get you to that place. By the time you get to a strong position and you are pushing hard, and building the revolution from ground upwards. Even those who do not recognize that you are doing anything, they begin to recognize you. And that is what we need to do. All right, uh, Honorable Weber, ladies and uh, gentlemen, before we continue with the conversation here, I'd just like to remind all of you, uh, ABS conducted a, sp a special fundraiser over the weekend, Friday and uh, Sunday. And we know that many of you were not able to participate. We are appealing to you. If you can support ABS with a free will donation of $10, $25, uh, $50, $1,000, we will deeply appreciate it. You can find the payment uh, platforms right there on the screen. The payment platforms, if you are in Europe, you can use that to uh, make a payment to support uh, ABS. Again, uh, you have uh, uh, a comprehensive uh, European platform 
for payment right there you can right now use your phone to take a snapshot of the screen and uh, go ahead make your donation while the program runs on uh, if you are in Canada if you are in Canada we have an e-transfer email that you find on your screen and it is right there again you can use your phone to make a snapshot to uh, make a payment in support of uh, ABS but if you are in the USA you can use uh, either PayPal or Zelle or Cash App that you find on the screen to make that payment it is deeply greatly appreciated without your support ABS will not be bringing you this kind of uh, programming thank you very much for considering that now I'm going to open the phone lines I believe uh, Honorable Weber still has uh, a few minutes to to spend here to take a few phone calls from those of you especially I like to hear from ground zero but if you are in the diaspora if you are in the diaspora uh, you are also welcome to call. Uh, I can also take uh, phone calls from the regular phone number, please. I can also take phone calls from the regular phone number. I see the phones are ringing. So, Honorable Weaver, please, uh, let's uh, just sit in there. Let's see. Hello. Hello, sir. May I know where you are calling in from, please? From Maryland, Dr. Chris. From Maryland. All right. Uh, what is your contribution, sir? I want to appreciate Honorable for coming. Uh, I have some worries about the Honorable structure. And I feel that um, if Honorable has a good intention for this revolution, he should instead put the leaders together. Ambazonians respect him a lot, and if he should come forward and tell Ambazonians that he called Ayaba, Ayaba did not come, he called Marianta, she did not come, Ambazonians will hold them responsible. The structures of Honorable Weber are already existing. Take for example, Honorable says we should form family committees. We have 15 of us in our family, but I'm the only one who support Ambazonia. How do I form a committee? With the family that are all are public. So I believe the structures of Honorable Weber we already have them in our LGA, in our in our in our in our counties. So I believe Honorable Weber should concentrate on bringing the leaders together. He should call them. We respect him. He should call them. If they refuse to come, he should tell us, Ambazonians, that this leader refuse to come. We will know how to deal with him. Thank you. This revolution is, is very complicated. To think that we have to go into churches to form committees is 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 the danger because we have the republic agents everywhere. We need to be safe to where we belong to, to prosecute the revolution. All right, thank so you, sir. I think Honorable gets your point. Uh, you will respond to it, but uh, let me get uh, trying to get as many second, callers okay, as just possible. A second, just a second, just a second, just a second to decrease. Okay. Honorable talk of honorable talk of doing things privately. No, Sako told us of doing things privately. But it was all scam. So things will be put to the public for people. We are no more at the level of private issues. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Honorable, please quickly take uh, do it. I mean, but that's the same point I brought to you. The structures are already there. I think, as the caller says, it's a matter of you picking the phone and saying, yeah, "Hey, please. Madam President, uh, Marietta, uh, yeah. Herbert, uh, yeah. Comrade uh, Akwanga." Please let's sit down. I'm, I'm saying the same position which I held before. The question I keep asking is where do you people think, or like my brother the caller, where does he think I have the power to invite anybody to stand them what I think? Where do I have that power from? I do not have that power. So one of the things uh, I am doing, and by the way, there have been issues raised maybe because i don't say much sometimes there have been issues raised people ask who am i you know the people who have set up their structures they would you know i don't want somebody running me down or feeling that i'm trying to take something from i'm keeping my you know my peace in my own little area 
So it's one of the things that I would keep saying. Uh, I haven't been able to feel I do not have the power to, to anybody. That's the first thing. Then secondly, in reference to uh, what uh, uh, he just put up about the committees, nobody's asking you to go to some church. I gave an example of how people organize elsewhere. You're going to some church. If you are setting committees to liberate your country, you are setting the committees of believers, people who believe that they can be ready to give all to do liberation. And Chris, by the way, I, you know, I took two commitments for the evening. And, uh, you know, my time is almost out. I was supposed to have to have a panel with you by 10. So we'll just take a few, just a few phone calls, so Honorable. Yes, just a few phone calls and we'll call it there. All right, yes, let's get to this yes. guy calling from London. Hello. I can just take one of yes, uh, good to be in a second, Chris. Um, Nice to see you having a uh, honorable river here on this platform. Thank you. Yes, uh, I actually also want to appreciate you for bringing such dignity in our in our in our, in our platform, and I also appreciate that you bring people like uh, uh, Dr. Ayamachu Lucas. You know, I know honorable river did sent out invitation to a person like Ayabachu Lucas and I wouldn't want to disclose the kind of arrogance that was sent or that was responded to Honorable Weber but we have the message that was sent to Ayaba and Ayaba because of the fact that we don't want a lot of little polemic in this revolution. I am not going to disclose that, but I think I will forward you the message because we have it. Uh, there, are, there is a lot of arrogance in this revolution. When Honorable Weaver says he do not have that power, that is because certain leaders feel they are untouchable, that they cannot even, they, they don't even appreciate a person who have left a mighty position in Cameroon and has put his has has given a lot. So I am comrade, to comrade, uh, uh, comrade. I think these are the talking points that Honorable has already put out. Uh, explained here himself. I think if we okay. do if we dwell again Good. on that way, yes. So it, it it is just to tell you that at least Honorable made an attempt to reach out to certain leaders. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that uh, update. Okay. Let's see who is calling here. I hope we can get somebody from Ground Zero. Hello. Hello. Please, before you call, shut down the volume of your set. I can't pick your call if your set is turned on. Hello. Yes. Hello, Secretary Chris. Hello, sir. Where are you calling from? Yeah, I'm calling from Pennsylvania. This is Jackson. Okay. I, I have two questions for Honorable. Number one question is, we've heard about so much of him inviting leaders and they did not come. So my question to him is, did he talk to them, have a discussion with them before inviting them? Or he just went for a book launch and then invited them to come, number one. Or he planned an event in Stuttgart and invited them to come. Because when you do things like that, that is the wrong way. I understand he had just criticized the HD. But he's, if, he, if that is what he did, which I know that's what he did, then he's doing the same wrong thing that he's accusing the HD of doing. You don't wait until there's an event, the people that you're supposed to be talking to them, they invite them to, 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 to that uh, uh, ceremony. I think that is uh, uh, out of place. Number two question. He keeps calling the groups that we have up here, the, the, the government and whoever, internet, 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 internet. That is not swinging. My question to you, me, me, the, the Honorable Weber, is that, does he know that all the two outings that he has gone out, they, are, they all have been on internet? When you call people internet government and you are coming out through ABS and other um, fora, 
to put out your agenda out there through the same internet are you not doing the same thing you are accusing other people of doing and where is your humility to accept that people are wrong without making them look bad so that you be the only one person in the house standing thank you thank you i think that's a, a legitimate question and i i, I asked that uh, question from the beginning honorable I mean, do you have a problem with the internet? You had your meetings on internet, I'm referring to Zoom and stuff. Do you have a problem with the internet? Chris? Is this what we are here for? Come on. I think we have better things to be worrying about. We have better things to be worrying about, Chris. But again, this, these, are these are reactions. These are reactions from yeah, your there, statement. There is, a, there is a means, there is a means of passing a message and everyone has the opportunity to pass theirs i have nothing against the internet all i am saying is are we using it for good or for ill so to me uh, i am making those references because i'm also seeing the damage that using the internet wrongly has brought to our revolution there's a lot of damage that has been done and i don't know whether we recognize that all right, let's get to this other caller here. Hello. Hello, good evening, Secretary Chris. Good I'm calling from um, the it's island of Mountain. Um, I want to greet every one of you on the studio. I have a question for Honorable Weber. Okay, go on, Sorry. please, surely. Yes, he talks about, he mentioned, he has been repeating a question. Believe, believe in the struggle. I know this struggle. I don't believe in the struggle because the need belief. I was asking you because it talks more on believing because belief stops you from thinking. It stops you from advancing your knowledge. Did he believe? Does he believe he has two hands or he know he has two hands? Because if he believes in the struggle, it means that he's not yet in the struggle. So what is your if question? He, what what is your question? Do you believe in the struggle or you know the struggle? <laughs> uh, Chris, thank you very much. Uh, to give a straight answer to the gentleman, it's a very simple process. Uh, you cannot believe what you do not know, even if you only presume that you know. You have to know something and then believe in it. And why I've been stressing on the belief factor is because those who are standing up and dying are those who believe in the freedom of their homeland. They are those who want that independence that we are all asking for. That is what they do. They will believe in it enough that they can stand and die for it. So when we refer to belief, it is because that is what makes people give their all. Because you cannot put so much in something you do not believe in. No matter how much you know it, if your heart is not in it, you cannot do it. All right. I take the last question, and this is the only one from Ground Zero. Uh, their networks have been very poor. Uh, the last question for you, Honorable Weber. I will take more questions be, uh, for myself when you leave uh, because of your time constraints. Hello. Yeah, una good evening, Secretary Chris. Uh, with Honorable Weber. Good, good evening, sir. Uh, where Hello, did you call from? Good evening. And you call for Ground Zero. Which place for Ground Zero? Which county? Which town? City? Okay, all right, thank you. What to be your question for Honorable? Abakwa yeah, boy. The very first I want to say, Secretary Chris, you, this, you be too arrogant, you so. You be too arrogant because in the already of an arrogant make and so that we 39 could disappear. So stop. Which, the, which, 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 39 are, which 39 are you referring to? Listen, if you don't have if you don't have a question for Honorable Weber, I just uh, put you off. We need somebody with a question uh for him not uh, calling for calling to make uh uh attacks okay all right this is uh, kumba hello hello 
Hello. Hello, sir. Yes, I'm calling. Yes, sir, go on. Well, that's a bad connection. Uh, that's a bad connection yes. there. Right. Let's get this last caller. Right. Hello. Yeah, uh, good afternoon to you, Chris. Good, good afternoon, sir. Calling from where? This is uh, Sabat Thomas calling from Belgium. Okay, sir. Good evening. What's your question? Yeah, I got two questions to ask on the road we bought. Honorable, we yes, believe in the Southern Cameroon struggle that much. Why did he choose to stay in La Republic's parliament for 25 years, of which they were not listening to him in that parliament? Secondly, Honorable Wibad is talking about his ruling council. What is the difference between Honorable Wibad's ruling council and the various structures that are fighting for the liberation of the Southern Cameroons. Is this a liberation council going to be the golden egg that will deliver the liberation of the Southern Cameroons? What so do you What do you want him to say? To say no? Let him answer the people. The Southern Cameroon people. All right. Thank you for the call, Honorable Wiba. Please, this this is the last uh, call I have for you because of time constraint. Go on, go on, please. Thank you. Um, I appreciate the gentleman. Uh, by the way, there's a point of correction. I was never in parliament for 25 years. Never. In fact, I was in it just for three and a half and I was thrown off the place. So I've never been there that long. So he should learn that. Um, the only other thing I want to stress about doing revolutionary committees for the liberation of Amazonia is the fact that I want them to understand that there's a difference between that because you can have as many of those committees as you would want that would involve so many people and that is the involvement of the common people that I'm talking about, the ordinary people, the citizens of the nation, the, you know, the people who can pull it together. Because as I've said, Chris, lots and lots of times, a revolution the liberation movement is all, always about three things. First, the people. Second, the people. Third, the people. If you do not get the people from the grassroots involved, and as many of them as possible who believe in it, you do not go very far. My reason for proposing this is so that we learn to put down the building blocks. I know it is difficult. But in order to get this freedom and this independence we are asking for, we need to learn to do the hard work and the difficult thing. It is that difficult thing that can take us to where we are going to. Remember what the boys standing and fighting are sacrificing. Remember what those who are supporting them are sacrificing on the ground. They cannot be doing that. And we think that the greatest thing that is difficult for us is to create a certain thing that can gain traction and give them what they need in order to drive us to Boya. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Honorable. I wish we could take more calls uh, from, especially from Ground Zero, but unfortunately, time on your side uh, wouldn't permit thanks, that. Thanks. But I appreciate you coming on board to take some of these questions and uh, answer them, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks. I really appreciate that. And one last comment before I go is to tell you in particular that we should start tuning down the rhetoric. We should start tuning down the rhetoric, Chris. Is that, is, that, is that a little indictment or what do you call that? No, it's not an indictment. I say we should start tuning it down because there is a lot we need to do. There's a lot of hard work we need to be doing. Well, a lot of I, 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 I get where yes. I get it's where you are coming from. I get where you are coming from. But yeah. I'm telling you, when you do the work that we do, and uh, see the way people just sit by the wayside and throw stones and talk trash, you can't take it. You can't take it. I know. I know. But we have to be growing in order to learn how to handle it so that we get more people, you know, pulling towards the same direction. 
So thank you very I much. I wish you had been in the, in, in the front lines ever since you came to the diaspora. I think your language will, will be a little bit different. But thank you for <laughs> thank you for coming <laughs> on. <laughs> we'll see All right, I appreciate that. Thanks All a right. lot. Thank you. All right, Have ladies and gentlemen, again, that was the one and uh, only Honorable Weaver, the man who started it from La Republic to Cameroon uh, Parliament. I will still open the phone lines for those of you on Ground Zero, and I'd like to hear what you think, because most of you who called could not express yourself because uh, of the network. I will open the line soon uh, again for those of you on Ground Zero in the diaspora to uh, kind of chip in what you think about uh, the responses from Honorable Weber. In the meantime, please, 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 I'm asking all of you, all of you out there to support ABS. If you were not out at the weekend to support ABS, I'm asking you to please consider making a donation to ABS within this last 30 minutes of the broadcast. We can actually do better, and I promise you, we're going to be doing better in the days ahead. But it takes your support. It takes your recognition that we are actually working for all of us here uh, to be able to continue to do this. So please, if you are in Canada, if you are in Canada, use that email address for an e-transfer, an e-transfer uh, payment for ABS and if you are in Europe in London you can also uh, use your phone take the screenshot of this payment uh, platform go ahead make your payment and if you are in the continental USA you have the PayPal information there info at ABS Africa TV dot com for paypal again info info at uh, absafricatv.com and then for zell you have the phone number there what you can do is again please use your phone take a screenshot and use that information to make a payment that supports abs ladies and gentlemen this has been quite exciting and right now i will get back to the phones why you go ahead make your payment support abs and i will be when you when you make your payment play just forward the receipt forward the receipt so i can acknowledge you and appreciate you let's me get to ground zero with this callers here my phone is ringing crazy hello Hi. hello sir. good evening please turn down the volume turn down the volume of your tv and focus on the phone Yes, turn down the volume of your set. Focus on your phone. I'm already on my phone. I'm just in bed on my phone. I'm not on my TV. I'm All right, go on, sir. Where are you calling I'm from? I'm calling from Abakwa. All right. Yes, what is your contribution? Yes, my contribution is just that I'm so happy with what uh, Weber has said. I am very happy and... Uh, I want to say what I want to just contribute in is just that I will plead that we should, we should at least listen to him. You see, all what he is saying, all what he wanted, he, we may only understand him if only he must have maybe start producing what he is actually trying to sell to us here. Don't you don't don't, don't you think that don't you working. think that don't you think that the writing for him to have done was to uh, assemble other leaders together and see how uh they can work together instead of trying to duplicate what these other leaders are already doing especially the interim government yes that is true what that is what he is supposed to do but he has not done it because one reason you know he's a human being he's not a robot that we must definitely do it that way so he must have not done it but we should always we should also to believe that in a country where there are so many schools for us to choose the right school is when the school is actually producing that we want and when we see that the school is producing well okay good and fine for now he has not yet started producing what he want let us i think we should just say okay good and fine so let those that were hanging on the fence that has not been supporting let them go but then okay. but, but if i may ask you what what then if tomorrow he comes out and say hey i didn't succeed because uh 
the government didn't support me, you people did not support me, you were all concerned about your government or your groups. Where, How would you know the whether... Interim government has its, the interim government as of now has his supporters and supporters are glued to him because that is the only movement that is producing, that is true. He is coming up with an ideology that this, this has not been going this way because of this, because of that. But yet, I, actually, as of this moment, I can't tell you I've listened or heard anything that could say this is the way out. But I want you to do something for me, Secretary, please. You both should do your back discussion and listen to those key things that he wanted because maybe it could be some targeted things that he thought that they could do which would still be of help to the struggle. So please, that's just all I That is my humble request. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You have a great you. night. Yeah. Thank you, sir. All right. Okay, let's see. Ground Zero. Hello. Good evening, Sir Chris. Good evening, sir. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Faco County, precisely a corner. Oh, okay, thank you. What is your contribution? Yes, I'll go talk for PJ because I want just talk say. If we listen, honorable, we buy all we talk, we don't talk with all the respect we ground zero get out for It is should say, honorable, honorable, we buy. If we look and logically, it will work with our republic. It will go, it will go towards federation. We will not deny federation. You know, sir, you, you, you know, sir, I start the interview by asking him whether he believe in independence. You know, be here, he. Logically, you will see, say, because forming committees, it is come now, come now, a divisive measure, see, they still bring up. Those committees are for what? Why not follow the, the other train we already did and try to correct the errors when they decide to train? All right. Yeah. Our contribution. Thank you. Thank you. Your opinion is legit. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for the call. But, thank you. Okay. Let's see who else. Is calling. Hello. Yeah, Chris. Hello, good evening, sir. From Ground Zero. Where, where on the Ground Zero? Meme County, Meme County, Kumba. Okay. Yes. Go on, sir. Yes, please. I want to play with you. Since the network is disturbing, try to go. Try to read the SMS of your WhatsApp. We send our questions and observations through SMS. But all the same, let me proceed. You see. We bar represent those classes of Amazonians who speak from both sides of their mouth. I see in Will bar an agent of Well, uh I think you have a uh, net Can you hear me? Alright, go on go on your back. Yes, but if if you were still on, on 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 the show, I would have asked him to tell him about well, you have network problems. To increase the firepower in Amazonia or in the group or in the county where it comes from. And then secondly, I would also love to ask him what his revolutionary committee will do that the IG and others have not done. So say next time when you when some people come on board, check your SMS message. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay, let's see who is next here. Ground Zero. Hello. Hello, turn down the volume of your TV, sir. Turn down the volume of your TV. Yes, I'm just getting away from the television. All right, go on. So where are you calling from? I'm, I'm calling from Abakwa. Please, a lot of things in your background. Let's get to the next caller. Please, before you call, make sure you are away from your from your television. Hello. Hello, Secretary Chris. Good evening, sir. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Grawan, sir. Okay, and uh, what is your contribution? Yes, thank you so much. My contribution is I want to join my voice with uh, Wiba. Let's forget about the switch dialogue. Let's forget about it. 
it will not work. Switch their impanel with uh, uh, La Republic. So I support him on that. It will not work. But the other thing again I wanted to ask you is that, okay, last time you brought, uh, last year or the early this year, you brought one man from uh, uh, Somaliland. The man explained how it was only through firepower, firepower, that they were able to get their freedom, their independence. The how comes we cannot still maintain this state, this same firepower, firepower. Then we get our freedom, our independence. And I wanted to tell uh, Honorable that it's only the true firepower that pass uh, on this 20th May that the whole winner is knowing that it was a fake, it was a fake uh, uh, national day. The whole world now has known again, and that's another good result for us, Amazonia, because of this firepower. Right, thank so you. I wanted to, uh, Weber, to join you people for this the same firepower. This is my contribution. Thank you, sir. I hope uh, I hope he's uh, he is he is listening to you and. Uh, I think that is what all of us hope for and I kept asking him why he couldn't work with the rest of the groups who are uh, sponsoring this firepower but he chose to go with the committees but thank you for the call okay let's see who is this ground zero hello please turn down the volume of your television and focus on the phone All right, where are you calling Hello. from, sir? I'm calling from Mizam County. Okay, and what is your contribution? Yeah, I want to talk. I wish uh, Honorable Weber was still there. I want to support the other caller who said Honorable Weber should, I mean, all his ideology is, uh, is a duplication of what is already existing. Secondly, uh, Honorable Weber was saying that he doesn't want to be a politician and that the structures that are existing are political structures. But I look at Weber to be a very intelligent politician who, having been uh, to the diaspora, took his time to study the existing structures and is now selling his ideology by moving around doing campaigns. He's moving around doing campaigns in order that his ideology should be bought. And so that when he starts it, he should become the leader. So I, I, see, I see it as a duplication. And uh, I mean a way to sell himself and his ideology. You see, presenting pictures of what he is doing to, uh, say, the refugees and so on, is already a campaign struck, I mean, a campaign uh, uh, system which he's putting in place. And All right. Saying that he is not a politician and so on, he's just trying to blind fool people. <laughs> okay, I'm glad you got that from him, uh, not from me, because yes. I asked the questions. Ex yes. So, uh, so I'm saying that if Honorable Weber is sincere to himself, he would have joined the, the, the struggle. He would have joined the, the existing structures and then brought his ideas to expand the base, so that. If it is the idea of committees, it should be formed. Not that he should be condemning, condemning, condemning. I don't see with him at all. I think right. he, uh, in fact, he's trying to do a good thing by putting down what is existing. So I, I think he's only selling his ideology, and uh, I wouldn't like that. But I like him for one thing. He has cleared it. Eh, that uh, he, he is not a, a federalist, as uh, people have been saying. I, as the, the former leadership was saying. And I want to think that this also uh, credits him and makes the, us our doubt in the former leadership to, to be very clear here now that, he, that, that, that a person like Sako was divisive. He had the All right. tendencies and this. All right. The, Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So as to grip himself on the seat. So I think so. All right. So, Thank you. So, Thank you. Your connection yeah. has a little problem. Thank you for the call. Okay, this is ground zero again. Hello. Please, before you call, shut down the voice 
the volume of your TV. Hello. Hello. Yes, good evening, Sir Chris. Good evening, sir. Where are you calling from? Yes, I'm calling from Mezam County on Ground Zero. Okay, and uh, what is your contribution, sir? Yes, I want to start by appreciating you for the great effort of always inviting the key persons that matter uh, on your program. Actually, uh, I want to say that uh, Honorable Weba, as it stands, even though uh, you know he sounded so somehow whimsical uh, as far as uh, uh, his uh, uh, the conversation with you on the program is concerned, but I believe as at now that uh, he stands a better chance to ensure that uh, unity actually reigns and that uh, this cause is actually fought in the right direction. Because for now, the major problem we are facing on this struggle not moving forward is, uh, you know, Comrade Cho Ayaba. Cho Ayaba is actually the one causing uh, division and uh, making things not to making us not to move in the right direction you know if for the past five years or getting to six years now we have not had what we, we are looking for it is because we are fighting in different directions and i must applaud the fact that uh, he raised a very pertinent point which i think if we even though he is uh, you know not wanting to be the uniting force or stand because people be asking that well, who are you or, or, and things like that i believe if he stands to unite uh, you know president marianta uh, uh you know comrade Com Com bo herbert the, the consortium and all the other movements or the factions that exist in this struggle if he stands to bring them all together without actually you know nursing any ambitions bringing them together to reason in a common direction even to implement some of the aspects of the of the well whatever he calls the revolutionary councils which i believe to an extent if you all sit down together and put your heads together at the end of the day you come to a common understanding of what he is trying to say and i think we'll be moving towards the right direction in achieving our objectives as far as this struggle is concerned. All so right. Please, Thank you, sir. Thank you. We need to take other callers. Thank you for, for the call. Okay. Let's see who is next here. Hello. Hello, sir. Is it Hello, sir. Good. Uh, where are you calling from? This is Beth. Calling from Japan. Calling from Japan. What is the time out there in Japan, sir? This is uh, half eight minutes to seven a.m. Tuesday morning. Wow, eight minutes to seven a.m. Tuesday morning. Okay. Tuesday morning. All right. Uh, what is your contribution, uh, sir? I'm, I'm so sorry. I I, I couldn't uh, participate in the ABS on raising for the past. Uh, this the only reason is uh, the time difference is really much i think we have almost uh, 15 hours difference so i can't participate in any of your programs so this one today i i i i, I saw the the poster and i said let me let me try as much as possible I, uh, to to attend to this one at least i'll listen to you whatever we were but uh Honorable Weaver should understand that uh, he keeps saying that, asking a question as to why do people think he got the powers to invite others? No. You know, if, any, if, if any leader can stay behind and ask the, such question, no one would have been here today. Correct. Yeah. So he he, he, he has made the announcement of, of, of how much he has raised. He has raised money. Where did he get powers to raise money? Okay. So, I think uh, the first mistake that the Honorable Weber met, I, I, I'm sure even if he's not listening to me, he will listen to this or uh, the last part of the, the show. Absolutely. So should, someone like me, someone like me, when the respect I have for uh, Honorable Weber, the day he stood in that parliament and spoke on behalf of his people, everyone saw a leader in him. Everyone saw a, a, a giant leader in him. But uh, coming out and 
and you're so quiet. The first outing was she came out instead of the, talking to the people, she came and criticized them. That was very, that was, that was, that was very, very wrong. And he has stayed up with today. The last week in in, in, in Stone Garden, she met the same. Uh, uh, he still go, went on to resize. I think all of us should to really to really step up and and come up clear. All right, I think you made a point, and uh, those those are the questions uh, we put to him, and uh, I guess you will <coughs> know that uh, the questions are not only being asked here, but that. All right, all right, comrade. Uh, thank you, thank you for the call. Uh, I believe he will listen to this part of the broadcast and uh, hear opinion like yours. And uh, just for your information, please uh, go ahead, uh, go to the website, support ABS. If you couldn't do it on Friday, I'll, I'll, Sunday. I'll, I'll, I'll contact you from the background, then I will, I will, I will, I will let, I will let you know how, how, how to turn in my own uh, little support. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Good, uh, good day. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Hello. 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 Okay, not picking the call. Let's see. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where are you calling from? All right. Uh, what is your contribution, sir? All right. So I'll just go straight by saying that um, you, you people that we call leaders, you don't stop to surprise us. It shocks me that Honorable Weaver could talk for hours, and then when he got to calls, he got up and said he's busy. That's really <laughs> shocking. Well, I hope he hears you. It's surprising. Well, I just wanted to plead with you, Chris. You look at that. you, a nice man. Your brother is in the bush. And this case, sometimes you interview people and you talk like you're a neutral person on the side. You're right there in the fire and you're seeing people that put you on fire and you cannot take them like, well, what I want to say is, you, Chris, you have the responsibility to talk to that man behind the scenes. Get everything. You are, you come on, he, he's trying to lead you too. You are Southern Cameroonian. Question him to every detail that you tell, can. Tell, you tell can. me what, tell me what question that you, you think I should have asked. That I didn't what ask. Is the diff yeah, and I think he needs a lot of explanation to do about the things he's telling you. That you, you, are, you are very correct. You, you are very correct. Unfortunately, when you have two hours for somebody who hasn't spoken for years, years, there is always so much you can do. I believe he knows your brother is dying in the bush for him. It yeah. means that whatever sacrifice he is doing for us, your brother is doing 10 times more. Like, that's just the facts about the issue. So you have to like, in your brother's shoes, why is he talking here if he hasn't communicated with your brother up till now? Is that not a breach of, who is he working for? What does he want? If All right. he talks to the film master and the film master projects him, it makes, 100% more sense. Why is he coming to the diaspora to accept? And then when Weber says that he does not have the power to invite this person or that person or talk for any person, when he stood in the parliament, was it the whole of Southern Cameroon that voted him to speak for them like that? He should continue his fufu. They say, finish your fufu. Joseph Weber, you have to finish your fufu, pa, please. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. You said it all, sir. I hope he hears you. Thank you. But you got to know that when I invite people 
Uh, my goal here is not to interrogate them or uh, speak on their behalf. I just ask the question, expect the answers made, and then you out there make your judgment. Thank you for the call. Hello. Hello, can you shut down the volume of your TV set in the background, please? Hello. Yes, hello, sir. Where are you calling from? It's a bad connection there, ladies and gentlemen. That's a bad connection. Hello. 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 Uh, hello. Sir, hello, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. May, may I know where you are calling in from, please? I'm calling from Ground Zero, Mezam County. Okay, what is in your mind? Yeah, I want to appreciate the wonderful work you are doing. And uh, most of the questions have been answered, but I wanted to just find out from Mr. Weber, even you can answer it. Do you believe that? If all our parliamentarians, sorry, all the English speaking parliamentarians leave the La Republic uh, Parliament, would that, would that be able to pass track this struggle? That's the, that's the question. The other one is an observation. Thank you. I believe that absolutely, 100%. Yes. So if, if, if you believe that, sir, can we now refocus our struggle to that? Or can we regroup our energies to that? Then the other one is an observation, sir, that. Uh, arrogance and impunity with most of these uh, leaders abroad. If they can moderate their arrogance, their impunity in the way they do things, probably will equally uh, fast track this struggle. That's just an observation, sir. And I, I support the last caller that you should work at the background, Mr. Wilbur. I believe things will move faster. Thank you very much. Thank you for the wonderful work. May God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the call. Okay, I take the last caller for the day and uh, we move on. Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chris. Hello. Good evening, sir. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Gangwan. Uh, okay, what is your contribution? My contribution is that Mr. Weber, Honorable Weber, is a great man. We have to appreciate what he, he, he did in the parliament. We have to appreciate him. But one thing is that he don't want to unite because he, he came to abroad because he ran away from here and went, went to abroad. He was supposed to at least first start with the people that are walking the ground. He was not supposed to say that I went and stay behind looking. No, that is not the way they are fighting. If you want the independent, you have to come with a firefighting. He was supposed to join you people and say that, okay, brothers, we have to start like this. As you people have started doing this one, we have to go this way. If his own ideology is good, we have to start it, but you were supposed to join you people. That is my own contribution. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. I wish everybody talks about unity, but nobody wants to unite, right? All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, we will call it a night here. Uh, thanking you so much, but please remember, please remember, ABS needs your support, especially those of you who did not tune in on Friday and Sunday to support ABS fundraiser. You still have the payment information here for PayPal. You have info at absafricatv.com. Info Zell. You have the number there for uh, Cash App. You also have uh, the uh, Cash App information there. And for those in Europe, you can uh, find the payment information on your screen. Please, ABS needs you. ABS needs you. Take your camera, uh, get a snapshot of this screen. Uh, to make your payment to support ABSO. By the way, I need to check to see if uh, 
anybody made a payment and uh, sent a receipt uh, for me to acknowledge let me see oh the calls have just uh, covered up everything here uh, the calls have covered up everything here all right i think i'm seeing uh, all the calls, all the calls, all the calls, so many of them. Over 448 calls here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry, 848 calls. Am I correct? Let me see. Yes. 848 calls came in within this short time 848 calls and you can imagine i took not up to 20 callers uh that is really really something there all right uh ladies and gentlemen uh i appreciate your uh staying put to watch and i appreciate your support for abs i look forward to being back here possibly not until next monday but of course my fussy will be here uh and other producers will be here and do not also forget that sunday is a special fundraiser sunday is a special phone raiser ladies and gentlemen for the restoration forces on ground zero sunday and some of, as i said before some of our fighters the generals the field marshals the commanders they will join us in that fundraiser on sunday so please get ready let us replenish what they lost over the five days of lockdown Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you back on the, on Monday. Yes, on Monday. All right. All right. Good night. Notre fierté nationale, le coach Florent Ibengue, amène ce joueur aussi loin qu'elle exige la compétition.
Honorable Alita Chamala Papi Matezolo Paul Bindu Pacific Palace Peter Wembodinga Dado Mizwa J.P. Diamantino Mabanga Yatalo Je suis 